counsel to Dane Wigington of geoengineeringwatch.org, the California activist, and the Minnesota Natural Health Coalition, an educational nonprofit organization based in Minneapolis. The geoengineeringwatch.org is a data and research repository on the critical issue of global climate engineering and climate intervention programs. Uh, that website has had over 26 million people visit, and roughly 20,000 people visit that website daily. Uh, Minnesota Natural Health Coalition is a nonprofit focusing on natural health and health freedom choices. Uh, they've taken an interest in geoengineering because of their belief that geoengineering poses uh, substantial harm to health. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to offer comments here in support of House Bill 6011, the Geoengineering Act of 2017. And I begin my comments by stating categorically that man's ability to, to deliberately manipulate and control the climate and change our environment is no longer science fiction. More than 25 years ago, in 1991, the U.S. Patent Trademark Office assigned to Hughes Aircraft Company a method of reducing atmospheric or global warming by seeding the atmosphere with a layer of metallic particles, such as aluminum oxide. That patent is currently owned and been assigned by Raytheon, a defense contractor. In 2009, a report by the United Kingdom's Royal Society, which uh, Reverend Price referred to, said this about geoengineering, quote, appropriate governance mechanisms for regulating deployment of geoengineering methods should be established before they are needed in practice. And these mechanisms should be developed in the near future if geoengineering is to be considered as a potential option for mitigating climate change. The Royal Society further posited that there is clear need for governance of research involving large-scale field testing of some geoengineering techniques, especially solar radiation management and ecosystem intervention methods, which could have significant undesirable effects which might not easily be confined to a specific area. So I'm not going to go through the entire chronology of the number of congressional hearings and United Nations hearings and reports on this subject. But to put it succinctly, just last month, as uh, Rick, Rick, Mr. Price uh, spoke, researchers at Harvard University announced a project to send aerosol injections into the Earth's atmosphere in what is probably going to be the world's largest geoengineering experiment to date. <coughs> now, given this brief history, there can be no dispute that the technology to deliberately manipulate the Earth's climate is real. It has been studied and written about for decades. And academics and political leaders right now are seriously considering experimentation with the possibility of deploying geoengineering. These are technologies to intentionally manipulate the atmosphere and our environment as a plan of last resort, a plan B, if you will, to counteract the effects of climate change because our society has not been able to control emissions. And fossil fuels is still the energy of the day. Please call the FBI 24-hour tip line at 1-800-CALL-FBI and select option one or visit tips.fbi.gov. So again, FBI's 24-hour tip line at 1-800-CALL-FBI and select option one or visit tips.fbi.gov. All tips will remain confidential. No amount of information is too small to report. Law enforcement will remain on scene until processing of the scene has been completed. We ask that the local community for your patience and your cooperation as we complete this task. Further updates will be shared via written statement. 144,000 chemicals that have been released in the environment by human activity. The human race does not seem very concerned about its own survival because it's not just the criminal corporations that are causing this problem. It's a population that doesn't want to know and certainly doesn't want to play their part in changing the direction that we are currently heading, a direction that will lead to near-term extinction on our planet. Statistically, it's already unfolding. Time to wake up. Now, on this note as well, on the contamination of our environment, as I stated in the beginning of the show, 
Here's a report, a shocking new report on aluminum and Alzheimer's disease. Confirms this connection. The report states no aluminum, no Alzheimer's disease. That's simple. This is from the report. This is perhaps an unexpected conclusion of a new open access paper published in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. Putting the headlines in context, what is actually being revealed is this, that brain content of aluminum is a catalyst for Alzheimer's disease. In the absence of pathologically significant deposits of aluminum in brain tissue, there would be no acute Alzheimer's disease within a normal lifespan of perhaps 100 years. Support for this conclusion has been building over the last decade and has now been put on an unequivocally firm footing by recent research demonstrating the exceedingly high content of aluminum in brain tissue in individuals who died with a diagnosis.